All right. So now I'm going to get into the nuts and bolts of how this works. Does anybody have any questions for me to this point? No? All right. I'm just going to keep on trucking along. So I like to call this ideation through enlightened empathy. You're using empathy to come up with awesome ideas. Um, and enlightenment is need statement development. You end at ideation, you start with empathy, and the enlightened piece is the need statement development. It looks like this. As a process, you listen to what the stakeholders are saying, you observe what they're doing, you run them through need statement development, you end up with coming up with great ideas. So how do you do that? You observe, you talk, you interview as many people as possible, as many stakeholders as possible. And this is the key, what we're doing right here through this boot camp is that we've got access to neurosurgery doctors, residents, biomedical engineering faculty, faculty at Duke that are interested in neuroengineering. And what I wanna see you guys doing ultimately is talking to and observing as many of those folks as you can to go through this boot camp. All right. We'll, later, we'll talk about how we're going to put teams into place and uh, and send you off on these um, on these scavenger hunts for awesome ideas. So, what does need statement development look like? You're coming up with a statement, literally a sentence that's free of solution, free of bias, it's short, and it's not making any assumptions or guesses towards what the solution is. That's the goal of this process. Okay, one short, but very specific statement. <clears throat> These slides are available to you, by the way. You're focusing on what change you want and not how that change is gonna happen. I call it, a, it's an art form, it's something, I like to think of it as poetry, to be perfectly honest with you. I write poetry, so that's why I like to think of it as poetry, but I, it's something that I look at and I try to write and write again and write again and try to make it sound good. Okay, it's a statement that when you say it to people, you want them to, it wants to sound good in their ear, right? It's not like this technical thing. Um, you want it to be broad but specific at the same time. It's not so easy to do. It seems intuitive, but it's harder than you think. So the mistakes seem obvious, putting a solution into the need. Seems obvious. Inappropriate definition of scope. How big is the thing that you're trying to solve? Right, you could say, well, uh, we're gonna cure cancer. There's no solution in that. It's just, it's too big, the scope's gigantic. Overgeneralization, you just, it, it works for everybody, everywhere. Um, and it doesn't include a metric for success. It has to include a metric for success. I'm gonna use uh, Novacore Medical Systems, the company that Tony is the CEO of as my case study. And, uh, and so here's the opportunity. Therapeutic hypothermia, allegedly, doubles the neurologically intact survival rate of cardiac arrest victims, okay, according to, according to research. Um, what the observers are seeing is um, paramedics, they're talking to paramedics, they're talking to first responders, and they're saying, hey, you know, we want, we want a way to cool up down patients in the field. They're doing it in the hospitals with these big units as big as this podium, and we, if you can make that thing miniature, and have it be rechargeable so we can put it in the ambulance, that would be great. So they're asking for a miniature rechargeable Alceus Cool Guard is the product that they want. So it's like, okay, that's what they asked for. You log that, you write that down. Okay? What's the problem today? As you as you investigate the problem, how are they doing it today? They're delivering two liters of ice cold saline to the patient. Um, there's no standard for how that's done. Um, and there's not a good option for having it now on demand. In some systems, they're delivering it by secondary unit trucks. In some systems, they're hanging out at firehouses. There's all different ways. There's no standard way that it's happening. 
So if that was your case study, if that's the arena that you're in, and you start to try to write a needs statement, what would it look like? And these were the best job I could do to write bad needs statements. So a need with a solution. First responders need a compact, rechargeable, catheter-based hypothermia device. That's exactly what they asked for. You're going to deliver them exactly what they, what they want. Inappropriate scope. Caregivers need a device to cool all patients indicated for therapeutic hypothermia. OK, no solution in there necessarily. But all patients is a lot of different people. You know, they've already got ways to cool infants inside the hospital. They don't count. You know, we're not looking at that population. We're trying to cool down a specific subset of patients that have cardiac arrest in the field. Overgeneralized, improved neurologically intact survival rate of cardiac arrest victims. Actually, this is a great need statement. But it's a need statement that's a level up, and I'm going to get into what I mean by level up in a second. It's a level up from where I think the sweet spot is that we're looking. There's no solution to improve neurologically intact survival rate of cardiac arrest victims. You can do that by reducing time to get to the patient. You can do that by improving CPR. Right? You can do, there's many different ways that you can improve this survival rate. And therapeutic hypothermia is one of those ways. First responders need an efficient way to deliver therapeutic hypothermia to victims of cardiac arrest. One thing that I'll see everyone do is use words like efficient. But what exactly are you trying to do? What does more efficient mean? How do you measure more efficient? Right? So it's just, there's no metric there. It's a fake metric or it's a non specific metric. So this is the slide that I think I like the best because if you get into it, if, if you really, I, I kind of get into this whole need statement development thing. Uh, I hope I do because I talk about it monthly. <laughs> um, you'll get into this argument, which is that's it, that's bull, man. There's a solution in the need. You know, therapeutic hypothermia is a solution. There's a solution in every need statement, and. You're, you're correct if you start to challenge that. There is a solution in every single need statement. A really well-written need statement is a solution for the need above it. But it does not have a solution for how it's going to happen itself, for itself. It does not contain a solution for how it will be achieved, but it is a solution for what's above it. So if you, can, if you go up, it's eventually increase the incidence of happiness and bliss. Right, like that's the highest level need statement. How are you gonna increase the incidence of happiness and bliss? Any number of ways. We're not gonna tell you how, we just know we want that to happen. Okay, reduce the incidence of cardiac arrest is maybe one way. If we have less of this, then we're gonna have more of that, right? How can we reduce the incidence of cardiac arrest? We can eat healthier, we can exercise more. There's lots of different ways to do that, right? It doesn't in and of itself have a solution. Improve neurologically intact survival rate of cardiac arrest victims. This is the one I showed before. Right, so if you imagine this, it's like a roots of a tree going down and forever out. Does that make sense? Can you kind of visualize how that looks? So each one itself is a solution for something above it, but how you achieve it is not implied in the statement. So this is to emphasize how important it is to continue to talk to stakeholders. And I've got these grayed out here. Let's just say that you come up with an awesome needs statement for this problem. Reduce time from arrival to initiating therapeutic hypothermia for first responders treating cardiac arrest. That's so far at the moment my favorite needs statement for this particular uh, project, which became a company that Tony's the CEO of, and which now has an FDA clear device. Um, how, many, how much money did you raise? Some, something close to two million? 
you know, so this started off as a student project. Folks like yourselves riding on the back of ambulances ultimately became a real company that raised $2 million and now is an FDA clear device. Um, but let's just say that you come up with these specifications. Okay, they ask for it to be rechargeable, but what do they really mean? They really mean no access to, no external power source. And you know, we don't need power to do it. It's compact. It delivers consistently cold therapy and it's available now. Right? You're done, right? Go. Never talk to a customer ever again and just go. Let's start developing. And that's a huge mistake. Your connection to the end users, your connection to the stakeholders, your connection to um, the customer never, never ends. I'm not going to get into this in detail, but you're going to look at pay the patient, the money, um, the device itself, the, the, um, the caregivers. You're going to look at it from a lot of different perspectives, which is going to allow you to identify different people and what their needs are. And you might see that, um, you know, from the patient perspective, if you follow the patient, the patient's going from, you know, where they fell down at their home to being picked up by EMS to being transported to an ED to then be taken into surgery. And if you follow them and you implement a solution that needs to follow the patient, then that solution might be really hard to implement. Right? And you'll highlight other things along the way. And what I like to do is show these more subtle specifications like, hey, it better not have an impact on EMS protocol because if it does, that will kill the product. Um, or it's got to be cost effective for EMS. If you come up with this very expensive high tech thing, then that can kill the product. Um, it's got to be single use but robust, right? These guys like to rip and, you know, rip, tear, throw, you know, and they, they're really hard on the products, but at the same time, it's gotta be a single use disposable based on the, the cost effect of this, right? So those subtle product development um, specifications are to make or break your product. So this is an activity that uh, you'll get again later when we go into the working session. Um, well, what you like to do is, no matter where you are, when you, when you have a need statement that you've written, or you've got a problem that you've identified, or you've got a solution that you already have, what I like to do is imagine this as a, um, a transparency that you can move around on a piece of paper, and make this the middle of the transparency and take whatever the statement is. It could be the observation that you've heard. It could be the product that you have. It could be the need statement that you just wrote. Move the transparency onto that spot and ask why, which gets you up to happiness and bliss, how, all the ways it can be done, okay? Who it's impacting, when it's happening, to figure out who all the stakeholders are. And this is this blows up a giant map, a mind map of need statement development that will hopefully help you zone in um, one really well written need statement that's at the level that works for you.